in progress. Okay, the, report, the recording is back. We're on live just once more, reminding everybody this is a six member board, soon, frankly, to become a five member board. Um, uh, so it, if a uh, proponent wants to um, take advantage of the process of administrative deferral in order to wait for a full board, uh, you have the right to do so. So let's return to the agenda, Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to call the next two cases, calling DOA 135-9889, 400 Meldea Cass Boulevard. There is a companion case, DOA 135-9896, 402 Meldea Cass Boulevard. This is for 400, erecting new six-story multifamily structure with 60 dwelling units, four live, five work units, live-in work unit, three commercial art stores. Violation Article 50, Section 24. Four live-in work units, first floor of the bid, in Article 50, Section 29. FAR Max has been a lot, has uh, been maxed. Uh, Article 50, Section 25, the building type is maxed. Article 50, Section 20.1, street wall continuity. Article 50, Section 24, gallery use is conditional. Article 50, Section 44.13, two or more dwellings on the same lot. Article 50, Section 44.3, traffic, traffic visibility across the corner. This is for 402 Melnia Cass. This erects a six story multifamily structure with 44 dwelling units, three gallery, retail, and live in work units. Violation Article 50, Section 24, use of conditions, gallery. Article 50, Section 24, retail is forbidden. Article 50, Section 24, one live in working unit on the first floor is forbidden. Article 50, Section 25, the FAR has been maxed. Article 50, Section 25, the building height is maxed. Article 50, Section 40.1, street wall continuity, and Article 50, Section 44.13, two or more dwellings on the same lot. Name and address for the record. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair Secretary. Erl Chair Ehrlich, I would need to recuse myself. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Feaster, we have yes. a five member. Well, I wanted to, I'll put my address on the record. I want to follow the rules, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Chair. I want to, Joseph Feaster from the law firm of Dane, uh, Dane Thorpey, address 175 Federal Street, Boston. And in the last case before the break, I was wearing my hat as the chair of the Urban League. I am here representing uh, the applicant here. And Stephen Chung is the architect on this particular matter. Uh, I am happy to have both spoken both on the previous case and on this one here. These are projects which are going to be instrumental in what's going on in Roxbury. In fact, this project here is on Melnia Cass, very in the same vicinity as what's going on um, with uh, Nubian Ascent, uh, as well as the uh, Benjamin Franklin and other properties in that area. But with that, um, I know that the secretary has read the violations. I will. Just for the sake of time, I will cease speaking and allow Stephen Chung, the architect, to walk the board through the project. Mr. Chung. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, I have a presentation. This is not what's being shown on the screen. It was just sort of a place. Can I go back to my slides? I think so, what, somebody's Madam, operating this. This isn't me. So can I can I share the slides that I have? No, no Madam Ambassador, uh, these are the slides that we have, and that we will go have to uh, adapt to these slides. Uh, okay, uh, let me. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. So this is a. Hold on one second. Excuse me. Uh, just give me one second because this is not okay. So uh, the project is at uh, 400 Melnia Cass Boulevard and 402 Melnia Cass Boulevard. Uh, what you're looking at is the uh, ground floor plan of the proposal, which consists of two buildings on one lot, which we call Parcel Eight. The far left is a park, which we call Gateway Park. The, uh, the project is the result of an RFP that was issued in February 2020 
Urbanica submitted a proposal in June 2020, was designated in April 2021. Uh, today, we have approvals from MEPA, BPDA, Article 80, as well as the Boston City Design Commission. Uh, sorry. So, okay, so the, okay, so we're looking at a typical upper floor plan, and we have on the right side is a, is an apartment building, and to the left is a condominium building. And on top of that is a podium. And the podium, if you can sort of slide uh, to the ground floor plan. Whoever's controlling this slides. Uh, other direction. And on the ground floor plan, to the far left, there is an art gallery, uh, which adjoins the park, the public park, which we are um, also uh, designing, developing. To the, far le uh, to the left of that is the lobby to the uh, condominium building. And then there are a series of spaces which wrap around that first building, commercial art spaces as well as live work art spaces. There's a space between the two buildings that is a pedestrian walkway, which connects Melnia Cast and the sidewalk on Melnia Cast to something which we call an art walk, which is a, a space, pedestrian uh, space to the rear which moves along the side of the building, the south part of the building you see there, and then connects to Gateway Park, which is to your far left. On the right side, we have uh, the apartment building, which has a similar program on the ground floor, a series of loop workspaces, as well as uh, some commercial art spaces. On the far right are all the spaces dedicated there, uh, for the residential building, um, lobby and uh, bike room and, and so forth and so on. Um, on the, in the inside of the plan, there is some parking, just a, a small number of parking for, for uh, the apartment residents. Um, okay, if you want to keep going. If I might this. come in, uh, in uh, Mr. Zhang, I, 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 sure. let me emphasize some of the points that I know that the board would like to know. First of all, this is 110,000 uh, uh, square foot mixed use development. The two buildings, as we pointed out, 400 and 402 Melnier Cast. There are 109 affordable units, 64 rental, and 45, 45 home ownership units, five of which are live work units included in the, the total. And four will be rental, and one will be ownership. We're really focusing here, trying to speak to the artists in the community, give folks live work spaces and do the community process and was desirable. And this was one of the reasons why this uh, applicant won the, uh, was selected uh, as the tentative developer for this project through the RFP process with uh, BPDA. Um, there's also 3,000 square feet of ex exhibition and cafe space and about eight, over 8,000 square feet of public parks. So we're trying to integrate all of this into, the, um, into this neighborhood in conjunction with the other developments that exist there. And I know um, Member Panato asked about our, uh, on the previous uh, developer with regards to their relationship to Benjamin Franklin. We also work very closely with Historic Boston, my client across the street in terms of Madison Park and what they're doing. So all of this area, Ms. Panato is being developed, as you know well, being a former director of Madison Park, uh, this is all an area that we're looking at, inclusive of Urbanica's project diagonally across the street, which is the, the hotel and condominium. So Roxbury is on the move. And these are projects which will indefinitely enhance that. And that's what this project is filling in the space um, through the RFP process, which was supported. So I just wanted to put those high level because I know your 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 time is whisking away there, um, Mr. Chairman. And I just wanted to, to do that unless you want Mr. Chung to go into. No, no, no. I, no, I appreciate it. Um, so let me ask uh, some specific questions. Uh, uh, how many parking spaces are for the, the total project, but for the combination of the two? There are, um, I believe, 15 spaces, just for the, uh, the rental building. Right. And how many? Oh, in sorry. The, in, yeah. Uh, I just 13 see. spaces. Sorry, we uh, no, we just had some of the recent adjustments to the floor plan. Okay. And, um, and with respect to trying to, to uh, this is the same question I asked the uh, previous uh, applicant. Um, with, I mean, I know, because this has come before us on numerous occasions, getting artists to come in, what is the process of uh, providing preference to ensure that that is 
just not a wish, but actually a reality. Yeah, this is Cameron Zahedi. I'm the developer for this project. We are working with Zia Boston, the art and cultural department, and also MOH. So these units are going to be only for the uh, artist that has a certificate with City of Boston. So we basically going to just market it through MOH and with the assistance of the uh, art and cultural you know, department of City of Boston. So we have been in discussion with them. And the idea of uh, the whole idea of this art on the first floor is really to activate the Melnia Cass and the Harrison Avenue corner and also close to the park. Okay, thank you. Because I do know that, I mean, I know that the, the previous applicants said that there are issues with legalities around fair market stuff, but I also know there are ways of really making sure, you know, through the certificate program that you mentioned, that there are ways of marketing in order to achieve those goals. So thank you for that. Thank and, you. and I might add also, Mr. Garlick, I didn't speak to the early applicant, but I am familiar with this as well. Under, under the Fair Housing Act, there are some exceptions to address certain specific uh, aspects. Which, which would allow this. I represent them here, and we certainly will pursue those, and I certainly will pass it on to the developer, uh, the previous developer, but there are provisions within the Fair Housing Act which would uh, give some exceptions. Yeah, you're wearing a lot of hats today, Mr. Feaster. I know, in terms of, you know, I learned that, I learned that from Ms. Bernardo, so therefore, uh, you know, and from you, so uh, I've been doing my best. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, okay, uh, uh, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the plans are good. I, you know, I, I was surprised there wasn't a bigger presentation with this, uh, at least in my files either. Um, so I did jump into the BPA website uh, when I was reviewing the cases, and I think there's a, there's a lot of merit to this proposal in terms of its urban moves. Um, I think the park on the corner of Washington Street uh, is quite nice and will provide, I think, some real uh, relief and programming there as needed. Um, one question I just had is, are, are you guys, the building behind um, that existing smaller building, is that part of this development on a whole, or is it it's just not part of this as a zoning relief case? The non-factory building? Yes. Are you referring to that one? That's a different uh, a different uh, proponent development. And, okay. but, we're, but we're in coordination because we have a space which interfaces with his. Uh, it's yes. near the end of our park, so we're coordinating. I think it's the same with BFED. We're sort of working okay. with our neighbors to try to develop the best urban plan. Got it. That's I wish I could show you all these images I have. <laughs> well, I'm, I have them up in my own screen, so I guess okay. for okay. my yes. viewing uh, pleasure only. But okay, okay. that was one of my <laughs> questions. Um, and then the, the connective path between the two buildings, is that intended to connect back into that? Is that part of that? I was trying to make sure I understand. That, that, that through block is uh, originated from a kind of an extension of Reed Street across Melnay Cass, a sort of way to kind of a bigger urban move to break the building also into two uh, on the ground floor and that does allow for a cross block connection into our so-called art walk which is uh, um, it's, it's a walk with a series of art live work spaces which join that space so we I think that we can sort of program that to have a kind of potential art fair or, or you know all those different programs linked together um, but, but just having that sort of mid-block connection was both convenient, but also allowing for more uh, ground floor glass and um, mm -hmm. visibility and trans, trans, um, uh, uh, understand. <laughs> okay. I, I, I get it. And I think only two more questions. One, um, I guess a, a, just a little question on the relationship of the building to the Harrison Ave corner. It does seem much tighter. I mean, obviously, there's a large park on Washington Street. I mean, I assume that was part of the BPA process. Um, I just want to sort of make sure we're not sort of uh, turning our back on Harrison. And then the other question you can just maybe pop on real quick, because I believe it's a, a very strong sustainability project as it relates to the roofscape and uh, sort of potential. So maybe touch on those two pieces, and then I will be done. Thank you. I mean, I, I can say that the building was we are moving, uh, targeting lethal um, roof, we have uh, solar panels, which you can't, you can't see in any of these images, but solar, a solar array and you know, electric heat. And I think that this is, uh, um, maybe Cameron, if you want to elaborate, but uh, this was sort of a requirement of, of, of the RFP as well as the developer's own kind of commitment to um, excellence in this area. One thing I would like to add, as Stephen mentioned, there are going to be solar uh, panels on the roof. We are also uh, designing this building to minimize the carbon footprint 
and most of the MOH, you know, buildings, they require you know, um, R40 for the wall, R60 for the roof. So they're very well insulated, triple glazed uh, glasses, is all electric. And um, also we are gonna have uh, renters and buyers go to the community uh, source uh, for buying the electricity. So minimize, like buying it from solar farms, so minimize any effect of uh, the gas uh, in you know this area. So and, most and of our buildings is basically based on very high sustainability parameters. And Eric, one other comment: um, there is a very pronounced scallop design on Melnia Cast. Those are clearly in deference to the existing trees on Melnia Cast, and that design not only allows for each tree to have its own space, but obviously we're, we're maintaining everything that's there. In addition, we're planting 48 new trees, so we think that um, all of these improvements to the, to, to the landscape hardscape will certainly minimize the effects of the, of the macro climate. So I think that there are also other other kind of uh, design considerations, which I think demonstrate our commitment to sustainable sustainable design. I, I appreciate you touching that because I agree with you and, I, and thank you for that sensitivity to what we're looking for. So thank you. No more questions. For me. All right. Any, any other questions from the board? Um, yeah, I, I also want to applaud sort of finally seeing these uh, parcels that were left over from, you know, urban renewal days getting developed in the city. Um, so the curb cut on Harrison, it, how does that relate to the curb cut at um, that at um, Morgan Memorial Goodwill? Because that, that's I, I know this is a tough site from a curb cut period, but how do, how do those two driveways relate? Can you go to the side plan? Yeah, they're not they're not aligned. That's for sure. Our curb cut is only simply to allow for access to our um, our small parking lot as well as some servicing for the building. It's uh, if you can go to the side plan, but basically it, it's sort of a, a wide enough for two cars to pass, but really then becomes one one space which extends all the way along our art block. Um, it's really meant to be pedestrian we, only, but it's meant for service. Can we get the, can we get the side plan? Oh, there you go. With, with, you know, a pretty large number of, of residents in the building, they're going to be catching Ubers and Lyfts and the like. Mm -hmm. Where are those vehicles going to stop? I mean, on the... Early, you know, we asked them to give us the permission to have a care cut the same way we have at parcel nine on Melnia, but BTD were not uh, for that, you know, thing. So they have to come pull into that driveway and, you know, basically stop there. So back of the building, because BTD did not want us to have any uh, drop off on the Melnia, even I thought uh, their experience is a very good practice, but. Uh, yeah, so can they turn around? How do, I don't, you have to walk me through how that happens. I mean, they go in and then they can turn around in the parking and then go back. Okay. And and you said all of the units are affordable? Is that what I That's heard? That's correct. Everything is anywhere from 30% up to 120%. Uh, on the home ownership is more between 80 to 120% because of the financing uh, mechanism that are available, but on the rental part is anywhere from 30% up to 120%. And, and can you speak to sort of um, MWE involvement in the project? Yeah, most of that, uh, per experience, uh, most of the times, you know, when we go on our development, over 40% of the project goes to MBEs or minorities, and the construction, you know, we reach out know, to Probably 60, 70 percent. Even here, we said 50 you percent, know, you know, 51 percent to the minority. But historically, we have gone over that. Boston residents, we've been around 50 percent, and women, we've been around 10 percent. Which uh, on the previous project, we tried to reach the same numbers here. You know, our goal is 12 percent, 51, 51. But usually, Boston residents and women we usually have some difficulties to reach to that 51 percent. But Minorities, we have probably 60, 70, 80 percent, you know, minorities on the workforce, you know. Thanks, Cameron. So, uh, other than construction, what about with sort of your your ground floor res your re commercial program or contracting? With yeah, the, the contracting basically we have a property management uh, is uh, from the UMI from the community. They are in Roxbury, 
-hmm. So those are uh, the firm that they're going to manage the project. And then after the construction, all the you know cleaning, uh, landscaping, everything else is going to be contracted to the people, actually businesses in the community and the minorities in the communities. You know? I mean, we have a good track record. I mean, I'm, I think I'm personally very proud of you know maintaining you know our commitment to this goal you know for past you know seven eight years on many projects not only in Roxbury we demonstrated in Austin we demonstrated in Jamaica Plain and I think that's one of the main goal that we've been, been keeping constant you know performing you know thank you hey Gene I just want to add that I've represented uh, Cameron on uh, most if not all of his development uh, including this one here uh, and I would fit that category. Thank you. Uh, uh, any other questions from the board? Is there anyone here to, to speak, uh, provide public testimony or against? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Keisha Santana from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the public and community have known about this project for quite some time and are in support. The only um, concern was, you know, to save the trees along the street, but um, they worked with them to, and the trees are remaining. So at this time, we would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Okay, John. Yes, hello, uh, John Poyerbach, Senior Development Officer, Mayor's Office of Housing. Similar to uh, the recently discussed Nuba, I said this is part of that comprehensive plan in, in Nubian. Uh, Mayor's Office of Housing uh, fully supports it. Thank you. Anyone else? Minor. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Minor Perez representing the Carpenters Union. I want to go on record on strong support of this project, and I kudos to Mr. Sahiri for not only he builds affordable housing, but he always does an outstanding job on the, his outreach to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I have a motion, please? Uh, I would like a motion to approve with BPA design review. Second. Uh, um, Mr. Fortune? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Donato? Yes. Ms. Don? Yes. Uh, and I am also in total support, so the motion passes. Congratulations. All right. Thank you very much. Before we go to the last case on Neptune, um, we're going to go back to the Melville. Is Melville on 47 Melville Avenue? Any raised, no, no raised hands here. All right, so I'm going to make a motion. I'm going to call it into the case, case BOA 135, 3570, 47 Melville Avenue. I'm going to make a motion to deny it without prejudice. I'll second that, Eric. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Nato? Yes. Ms. Dawn? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Uh, and I, too, am in support. That is uh, motion passes. Calling your next case, calling BOA 123 84024 Neptune Road. This is our, this will change from a beauty salon to adult recreational retail cannabis dispensary for violation of 53, section 11. Cannabis established use is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, my name is Kyle Smith of Satara Law, business address of 359 Newbury Street in Boston Back Bay. On the call with me, I have the owner. Uh, and his mother, uh, co uh, financial partners, and also the gentleman who will be running uh, security uh, for the proposed uh, dispensary. All right, you want to tell us uh, a little bit about the proposal? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, very quickly, uh, this is a pre existing structure. Uh, it was formerly used as a, um, a beauty salon. The intent is just to convert the space, do interior reconfigurations, um, do some minor exterior. Uh, building envelope um, upgrades, uh, more aesthetic, uh, some signage. Uh, there's pre-existing curb cut, there's pre-existing uh, space for about eight off-street parking spaces. Uh, we have run through the normal um, community outreach process and presented before the BCP for which we have approval uh, with one condition which has been updated and we currently have a proposed uh, host community agreement which we are waiting for signature from the BCB pending their confirmation of new uh, legislation. 
So have you have you already gotten approval from the uh, cannabis board or not? Uh, yes, similarly to the people that presented before you on the 27th of July, they did uh, provide approval uh, with one condition. And that condition was? Uh, that there was a proposed kind of takeout window, if you will. Um, I don't want to call okay. it like a drive through, but they had requested that to be removed. That has been uh, done so, updated plans okay. have been UBCB. Okay, so that was my question because it says pickup window, and this is not a drive, this is not Dunkin' Donuts, right? <laughs> uh, no, sir. Okay, but there is still, a, a, but the basic business model is a pickup window for pre orders, uh, that is correct? Uh, no, that was the request of BCB to remove that function, that uh, pickup window, if you will, so that is proposed to be removed. Okay, no, no, but I mean, are people going to pre order and then come and pick them up? Is that is it not driving, but not a drive through, but just walking yes. in? Yes. Anybody that can pre order for efficiency's sake, it's welcomed. Um, oh, okay. So, but it's not limited to pre-orders. That's what I meant. Correct. Okay. So this is a, just a conventional uh, cannabis establishment. Yes, sir. Okay. And what are we in relation to the buffer zones? Um, uh, we're in excess of, of both requirements. I would say that in some of the community outreach, there was a concern there. There is a school in excess of the buffer zone, but there was concern about uh, children as passerbys uh, on um, sidewalks um, for incoming and outgoing cars. So the intent is to have a external uh, traffic kind of overseer to ensure that, you know, when schools are releasing, which again are not inside of a buffer zone, uh, that they are, you know, protected by people, pa uh, patrons of the establishment. What, what, what is the distance to the near, nearest school? Um, if I can confirm that while you ask further questions, uh, okay. or if uh, Brian, if you have that answer, uh, as well. uh, that's fine. Uh, Mr. Robinson, how are the drawings? Uh, the drawings are fine. Um, I was checking the same. Is is Excel Academy within 200 feet ish, 250? Um, on Raymond Street. I had the same question. I'm sorry on the uh, buffer of the because I know Excel no. Academy is fairly close to that building. Uh, it does look like it's within, within I want to no. say half a mile. Or maybe it's, oh, is it 500, oh, 580 feet, I guess, roughly. I'm doing a very quick Google map, so I'm not. It's don't. 580? Okay. About, I'm just sort of roughly, so, okay. So it's just outside of the, yeah. the, the limit. Um, but, you know, I think the layout is fine. It's a fairly small space. I, I do question some of the, I guess, the signage that's shown in the renderings. That I, I guess that's sort of a little bit, I think, I'm not sure that's even allowed, but that's, well, I'm sure that'll be addressed at some other point by somebody else. But um, in terms of the what's proposed, I, I don't see any, other, any questions from me in terms of the uh, operation or design of it. Okay, any questions from the board? All right, uh, is anyone here to testify either on, on behalf or in opposition to the proposal? Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office would like to defer a judgment to the board. Uh, some background information on the community process. Our office held a community meeting on April 6th of 2022. Uh, we had less than 10 of others uh, attend that meeting. Majority of those of others expressed uh, excitement towards the proposal. Um, there were con some concerns uh, voiced regarding proximity to the two schools, as you heard from the applicant, as well as the amount of uh, traffic. Um, the site is next to one of the exits and entrances of Route 1, so it accumulates a lot of vehicular traffic over time. Butters also voiced concerns regarding the pickup window um, that has been addressed by the applicant. Uh, the applicant met with the Eagle Hill Civic Association in January of 2022. Uh, they did not receive a, a vote as the association states they'd rather not vote on these kinds of proposals but there were no objections raised in that meeting so far our office has not received any letters of support or letters of opposition with that we defer to the board thank you thank you okay is there, uh, uh, is there anyone here anyone else any raised hands anyone here to uh looking to speak looking to testify all right um, in that case, I will entertain a motion. Um, I have one, one, sorry, one follow-up question to the proponent. So there's a rear parking lot. Is that for use of this building? 
Uh, yes, so that, well, you have a site plan. So basically the existing parking lot, if you're looking at the structures to our left, so it's basically existing curb cut with approximately eight parking spaces. Okay, no further questions for me. Thanks, sorry. Okay, can I have a motion, please? Motion to approve with BPDM design review. Can we, can we add, can we add um, B, BTD review of the access and parking? Because it, it's a little, there's something funny going on. And like, I can't quite tell what's going on in the plan, but um, just to make sure that the, it's lined and striped and, and, and a, not a mess. So. <laughs> I, I think not a mess is a good thing. <laughs> Maybe that's too high of a proviso. I <laughs> okay, so is, uh, I'll second that. Ms. Pinata, so we, we're looking at BPDA and BTD design review. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, Ms. Pinata, okay. this is Tom. Uh, can I clarify? Is this for this applicant only as well? For this applicant yeah, only. For this yes. applicant only. I okay. agree with that. Second. Thank you. Okay. Roll, uh, Mr. Fortune. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Pinato. Yes. Ms. Dong. Yes. Ms. Better Barraza. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. <coughs> Thank you all. Following our next case, calling DOA 125 8783 Erie Street. Just combined in parcels, direct a six unit apartment building. The violations, Article 10, Section 1, the limitation of parking areas. Article 60, Section 40, parking maneuverability. And Article 60, Section 9, the building has excessive in feet. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. I have a business address of 15 Dobson Road. Mr. Chairman, we're here today um, to confirm um, the board's approval of this project. Um, this project was approved by the board on August 9th, 2022, um, to erect the uh, six unit uh, building. Um, the violations before you today were read into the record and voted on and approved on that date, August 9th, 2022. However, there was an issue with regard to the notification and the notice. Thus, we are back today to confirm the approvals uh, given by the board on that date. Okay, so uh, Mr. Small, was there anything, has anything changed in the proposal? Nothing, nothing has changed. Tom, Tom, if you can clarify and, and just confirm that. Uh, Tom Broome. Yeah, good help board members, Tom Broome. Uh, Terry Small is correct that this was, there was a notice issue with respect to these violations. They were changed on the user letter, but they weren't changed on the notice that was mailed to the public. So, okay. from the uh, board's credit, believe. Really. Okay, so we should move through this with pretty, uh, as long as nothing was changed. And, uh, and did our approval have provisos associated with it? Yes, yes it did. Can, can, you, can you specify what those provisos yeah, were? The, 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 the project was approved with design review, um, no driveway, and to preserve the trees and BPDA um, design review for roof yeah. Okay, all right, so let's do this. Uh, I mean, let's go through the process. Uh, because it's a new application, but I think everybody uh, should understand that this is basically just reaffirming a decision that was made uh, prior. So, Mr. Robinson, how are the plans? The plans are fine. One question on the provide is the head house, was that part of the proviso? Yes, it was. It was. Okay, okay. Right. got it. Thank you. Nope. Uh, plans are fine. No other questions. Yeah, thank you for uh, specifying that because I recall that. Okay, any other questions from the board? Uh, I'll ask for public testimony, but I'm not, uh, but really brief. There's no need to go over this all over again. Okay, I appreciate everybody's respect. <laughs> process. Mr. Uh, Chair, I'll just say, uh, just from the notes from our liaison, the Brandon community process indicated there was some community support. Okay, thank you, thank you Mr. Newman. <laughs> all right, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Um, I probably should have wrote down. I guess we have to apply the same proviso. Same yeah. Classes, yeah. yeah. Um, if I don't remember them exactly, so if we can just apply the same provisos, that would be fine. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the motion made uh, to approve with the application of the same provisos as before. Is there a second? Second. All right, uh, Mr. Fortune? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Donato? Yes. Ms. Dong? Yes. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. And I'm also in favor. Uh, the motion passes. 
Thank you, members of the board. Have a good day. Following the next case, calling VOA 1258638, 20 Hinkley Street. This is seeking to erect a single family home. The violation Article 55, Section 65-41, uh, off street parking is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient rear yard setback. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient lot size. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient lot frontage. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient lot width. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient front yard setback. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient side yard setback. And Article 65, Section 9, excessive FAR. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Uh, presenting here today on behalf of Mike Token, uh, the applicant, and we also have Eric Zacherson from Context as the architect. Um, this proposed project is at 20 Hinkley Street in Dorchester, and we're seeking to erect a one-family residential dwelling on an empty city parcel. Uh, right now on this, the last page, you were just looking at a rendering, um, or at least uh, the elevations, uh, colored elevations of the uh, proposed structure. The uh, lot size is 2,000 square feet. Um, and uh, just to go over the layout, um, on the first floor, we're proposing two bedrooms, a family room, and a bath. Uh, on the second floor, a uh, living room, dining room, kitchen, and a half bath. And then on the third floor, uh, two bedrooms, two bath. And then we also have a roof deck at 440 square feet. It's exclusive uh, to the top floor, obviously, uh, through a hatch. Um, so there is no head house on the building. It was mentioned uh, in the violations we do, and I'll go over the violation, but we had a parking violation. Uh, when we originally had filed, we were proposing to have uh, two parking spaces. Um, and through our community process, the community asked us to remove those parking spaces. They did not want a curb cut uh, to allow for one and then a tandem space behind it. Um, and that is why we have that new violation um, the other violations, just to mention, um, we have a lot area. Uh, it is a, a 3F5000 uh, district, um, and we have, so it is a multifamily 3F district, but we have 2,000 square feet. Um, lot width um, is 50 required. We're at 25 for that in frontage. Uh, the building now is modal. That is another change. Um, so we actually uh, ended up getting a rear yard violation uh, since we first filed. Uh, 20 would be required um, through the shallow lot exemption. We're at 10 foot 3 inches, and again, that was based on public comment to keep the building completely lined up with the streetscape um, on Hinkley Street. Uh, we have a side yard violation as well. At uh, left side is 2 foot 6, right is 3. Um, 10 is required. Uh, but that is pretty standard for this area. Um, if you look up and down, there is, uh, we are, uh, have, are surrounded by three family buildings, um, like 3,200, 3,400 square foot lots. Um, that is why we felt the one was reasonable for this area. Uh, I can pause and answer any questions. At the okay. well, so Mr. Drago, this is, what was on this lot before, or what is on it now? It's empty, uh, Mr. Chairman. It's a, it's empty. Uh, I mean, 2,000 square feet? Uh, Mr. 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 Ehrlich, I just don't, wanted to remind you we lost Mr. Barraza. She she had to leave, so there's only yeah. five members. Okay, uh, and so Mr. Drago, just to tell you, there's only five members, which is you need a unanimous vote. So I assume you you, you know that. Um, prepare to go forward. Yes, I am, Mr. Ehrlich. Um, so yeah, we are 2,000. Um, most of the buildings around us are 3,200 or 3,600 with three unit buildings on them. Um, well, yeah, no, no, no. I, I appreciate the fact that it's a single family, but uh, 2,000 square feet, I think anything more than that would be kind of outrageous. Oh, no, no, I, I understand. And I know BPDA, I recommended approval as well. So. Yeah, well, uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, okay, and, and there's a roof deck with, uh, with a hatch proposed? Correct. Okay, and the roof deck is, is, is a setback toward the, toward the rear end of the building? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking at it now. Okay, uh, Mr. Robinson, uh, how are the plans? This seems like a tight, tight fit. It, the, the plans are uh, fine in terms of the proposed layout. It is what they're proposing. 
I don't disagree with you. I think it's actually quite tight um, <clears throat> on the site, and I know there's been some, you know, I know there's some community uh, uh, concerns about it as well, uh, going through all the letters. But um, it, the, no questions on the proposal. I think it's it is what you see, and it is tight. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the board? Is, is that is this the site with a, a large pine tree or existing there? Yes, Ms. Panado, it is. Yeah. So, yeah. It, you know, I, I imagine on this size lot, there's no other plantings possible? So we actually, um, because we're setting to line up with the other buildings, we're hoping to keep the tree, trim it back, um, because we do have a front setback as we pulled the building, and that was based on um, public feedback. Thank you. And he, all right, um, then we'll move to public testimony. Anyone here? Well, actually, Mr. Hampton, did, uh, did the BPDA have any uh, view on this project? Yes, actually, we did recommend approval with design review on this. We understand that it is tight, but um, we think a one family would be appropriate on a smaller lot. Okay, and, and in terms of contextual, uh, you think it fits in? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where there are some triple deckers on in this neighborhood as well as regular uh, colonials. Um, so, yes, we, we feel the context is fine. Okay. All right. Can I move to public testimony? Anyone want, uh, want to speak either on behalf or in opposition to the project? Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. George Wynn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted... Um, two of those means for this project in October of last year and January of this year. And the proposal received overwhelming and consistent opposition from community members, including the Dorchester North Neighborhood Association and residents feel that the proposal is too large for the lot and that the design is inconsistent with the neighborhood. They're also opposed to the roof deck. At this time, let's defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Mr. Chair, right. Secretary here, we do have opposition letters at the uh, mayor's office you spoke of. Uh, are there other roof decks in the neighborhood? I don't, I, I, not immediate next to us, Mr. Ehrlich, but I think we would be happy to remove the roof deck if the board saw that. All right. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Joe McGarren, City Council, Frank Baker's office, uh, we're in opposition to the project today. Uh, any, any reason, particular reasons? the same reasons is cited by the mayor's office there's just a lot of opposition and there's just no community support for this project okay thank you anybody else mr chair members of the board paul sullivan city council Lodge michael clarity council general right composition madam ambassadors any, any other uh raised hands sure like this is tom we got a couple of raised hands on this one i'll, I'll, I'll try to get them up here Okay. Hi, Tom. Uh, can you you got your hand raised? Right? Big other Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So yes, my name is Thomas Murphy. I'm a director of butter. I live right behind this piece of property. Um, I'm obviously opposed to this. It's it's way it's there shouldn't be anything built in this lot, in my opinion. Um, I've lived there my whole life. I'm 52 years old. I've lived in this house, if not this house, the one right beside. Um, so I've abutted this property my whole life. And to me, this has always been a side yard. I know they keep calling it an empty lot, but it's more of a side yard. You really have to see it to, to even believe that they're trying to build something on this. So again, we're completely okay. opposed to this. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, there's one more. Uh, Mark uh, K, I think. An email address for a name. Uh, hello, Mike Smith, my name is Hugh Fifty Street, and I'm a father directly across the street from this property. And um, I would like to say that uh, there's been nothing but unanimous opposition uh, to propose it. And it's like putting a size 12 and size 6 shoe. It's totally inappropriate. Uh, and, and actually, since I've lived here for 30 years, it is used as a side yard for okay. All right, thank you. You're, uh, the point's been made. Thank you very much. 
All right, uh, can I have a motion, please? May I respond, Mr. Ehrlich, if possible? No, 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 I think, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, can I have a motion, please? Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I'm gonna make a motion to deny without prejudice. I, I, I do think it's too big. I, I think the proponent has a right to build on a site. Um, I think that just the proposed a project is, is too big um, for where it is landing, side yard or not. So um, that is my motion. Okay, it's unclear to me if they can do much less than a single family. So I'm wondering whether deny, deny straight denial might make more sense. But go, is there a second to Mr. Robinson's motion? I'll second that motion, Secretary. All right, uh, Mr. Fortune. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Bonato. Yes. Ms. Dong. Yes. Okay, and Ms. Benabaraza is gone, so I will vote uh, in support of that motion, which means that it has been denied without prejudice. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I just want to make sure Falcon Street's going to move forward with a five-member board. Is, is Falcon Street on? Mr. Lind? Yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Secretary, I apologize. Um, Are you still going to move forward? I'm thinking of the looking at the table and seeing the cards that have been laid. We are going to take a full board uh, for our Superintendent Falcon, so requesting a deferral. Okay, uh, you have the right for administrative deferral, so I would uh, entertain a motion to, for deferral. I'll make a motion to defer. For a second. second. Uh, Mr. F. Fortune. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Bonato. Yes. Ms. Dong. Yes. Ms. Better, oh, uh, she, she's gone. Uh, I am also in support, so uh, the, the case has been deferred. There will be a date of uh, November 15th at 11.30. Thank you very much. And um, let me just say that um, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, those members who may not be moving on, uh, it has been a pleasure working with you over these past years. Uh, we certainly expressed uh, a certain level of professionalism and, uh, uh, caring about the city of Boston, and I do appreciate that. And I think yeah, it's been a pleasure working with you. So thank you, Mr. Lines. Thank, thank you, Mr. Lines. Okay, uh, Mr. Fortune, is that it? That is it, sir. Okay, uh, can we go to a uh, the, then the meeting is uh, adjourned, and uh, can we go to a, a private session with the board members? Recording stopped.